everyone. Lots of you have been asking for my predictions for the paper one physics exam tomorrow. So the main thing here is maths is going to be your best friend. So many of those questions, as you know, will involve equations. I don't want you guessing the equations. There's absolutely no excuse to get these wrong. You're going to pluck the correct one from the equation sheet. It's up to you if you write it out in words or if you use scientific symbols. Coupled with that, is making sure that all the units they provide you with are converted to the standard SI unit. This is so, so, so important. Too much do I see people just shoving the number in exactly as it exists in the question paper. On, on questions worth three or four marks, there's a reason why they're worth three or four marks. You can't just be doing that. You need to be getting milliamps into amps kilowatts into watts okay so make sure you've got your unit conversion sorted so that you're plugging in those numbers correctly and make sure you've learned your units so when they give you that space that you're putting in the right unit whether it's coulombs for charge ohms for resistance the other thing to be careful of is that motion equation v squared equals u squared plus 2as number one people don't recognize that that's what the equation is that they need to use and number two they think they haven't been given enough numbers in order to use that equation so I had someone say to me the other day in a lesson, oh, the question's wrong. The examiners have done it wrong because there's not enough numbers. Obviously, there is a chance that they could have screwed up. But I think 99 times out of 100, that won't be the case. So you need to look at clues in the question. If the word at rest are used, that automatically means that the speed is zero. If they're talking about acceleration on Earth, the number you need to use is 10 and they'll expect you to know that. So please, please, please make sure that you're recognising which equation you need to use. Coupled with that, if you ask something to do with the Doppler effect, which is like, you know, why is there a change in the observed frequency? Do specify it's the Doppler effect in the way that if you're talking about the motor effect, do specify Fleming's left hand rule. Don't just ignore these things. And then state an appropriate equation. So the wave speed equals frequency times wavelength is an extremely important equation to state with the Doppler effect. Why? Because you're going to point out that the wave speed remains constant, the wavelength changes, and that will therefore have an effect on changing the observed frequency. So as long as you're using that equation appropriately, there's no reason why you can't get four, five marks in a Doppler effect question. So yeah, do watch out for that sort of thing. Don't be sloppy again with units. Too many times do I hear that weight is kg. No, it's measured in newtons. Be careful with your forces. They're gonna, they could ask you about forces. They could ask you to do a label diagram. So make sure the arrow lengths represent what the actual motion of the object is. If the parachutist is accelerating, that weight arrow needs to be longer than the air resistance arrow. So yeah, physics is weird. Like I don't particularly wanna pull out specific topics, but it's as a whole, the things you should be looking out for. Do make sure you know that you know how to measure the density of a regular and irregular object. Consider, you know, that terminal velocity answer in terms of four marks, what's going to happen. Energy transfers, I think, are important to do with conduction, convection, radiation. Make sure you use those words when discussing why a thermos flask is able to keep a liquid hot for a long time. For example, I don't want things like heaters trapped. You need to talk about shiny surfaces being a good reflector of infrared radiation, air being a good insulator and preventing conduction. So keep your answers really, really specific in physics. Anytime there's like a one mark maths question, you shouldn't really be using an equation. It should really just be a very simple, like either you're copying the number down from before, or if it's like a pressure difference thing, maybe you're adding atmospheric pressure. But if you're doing too much maths on a one, one marker, you can be pretty sure that you've gone a bit wrong there. So be careful. So these are all things I want you to watch out on the exam tomorrow.